तस्जनयन हर्ष कुरुवृद्ध पिताम सिंहनाद विनद्योच शंख दतापवान to gladden him to gladden duryodhana the majestic grandson the senior most guru bhishma blew his conch and raised a lion's roar with this verse we enter the next topic which speaks of how both the armies blew their conches and were ready for battle there can't be a more dramatic introduction of spirituality than this so bhishma was one who had sacrificed and worked in a spirit of service and so therefore he was the leader of the kauravas bhishma realized even at this moment that to have duryodhana despondent and depressed and dejected was not a good sign and so the moment he sensed duryodhana's weakening spirit he blew his conch to gladden him to uh, encourage him to motivate him and it happens he raised a lion's roar so not only was bhishma respected for his sacrificial nature and service but in those days people respected age he was the senior most guru not like today the moment you cross 50 you have one foot in the grave earlier the so that's how it takes a cyclical pattern the older generation was respected and their word was followed their word was law today the older generation it's the younger generation who dictates terms to the older generation you don't do this you don't do this you should do this you should do that it starts with kids school going kids telling their parents so anyway at that time he was not only the senior most guru but even in spite of his age he was the most valiant he was physically fit and so therefore uh, duryodhana uh, was so the demoralized that he was he immediately perked up when bhishma came into the picture and blew his conch so what the message we get is how to be strong you don't become strong by developing what do they call six pack abs that is not strength strength comes from unselfishness anybody who is unselfish is revered not only in this country throughout the world uh, when america was going through a recession the rallying cry among the americans was learn to sacrifice for the country they were going back to their founding fathers and said the founding fathers sacrificed and this generation is only using up what the others have worked for so service and sacrifice in the 13th chapter of the gita krishna describes the role of atman in different kinds of people he says in verse 23 of chapter 13 upadrashta in a criminal in a negative person in a selfish person what does atman do he is a mere witness onlooker upadrashta the moment you become less selfish atman becomes god becomes an approver anumanta permitter allows you to do whatever you doing upadrashta anumanta then when you become unselfish he becomes a bharta he fills you so if your bank has your bank balance is um, let's say a 1 lakh of rupees suddenly you find that from nowhere 9 lakhs has come into you into your account bharta he fills you then you become the enjoyer bhokta you know the problem is we all work hard we earn money we have a lot of benefits but hardly anyone enjoys all that you acquire things and it's dumped at home as long as you go out shopping you say i want this i want this i want this you buy it and come home and it lies in the same carton unused 
for several months before suddenly you realize, oh, I bought this. So you don't enjoy. The capacity to enjoy is only in a spiritual person. Worldly people are only rushing after material things, they never enjoy it. A spiritual person enjoys because he has his mind is calm and he has the capacity to enjoy. So bharta, bhokta, then you become Maheshwara, Supreme Lord. This is the development of a human being. Now you have to decide which, which end of the spectrum you are at. On Luka stage or further up. You see, the, it's not as if Atman or God is partial towards un, unselfish people. What he's trying to say is, when you work against your conscience, there is a, there's a conflict within yourself. So there's a resistance within you. So you feel that, that you have to work extra hard to overcome this resistance. Then, as you follow your conscience, it becomes effortless. The conscience approves what you're doing. And all your faculties, your body, your mind, your intellect, and your conscience are working unidirectionally. That's why it has this cumulative effect. So therefore, the rewards of being unselfish are huge. What you have to ask yourself is, then why on earth am I selfish? Because of just immediate pleasure. For a few seconds of pleasure, you give up a lifetime of happiness. Nobody thinks, what am I doing with myself? I'm, I'm, why am I hurting myself? Why am I making myself miserable, unnecessarily? I have a choice. And I have a right to be happy. But only I can do it. Each one of us must tell that. No one else can confer happiness to me. I have to find a way to be happy here and now, given the circumstances, given whatever situation I'm in, without changing anything around me. That's possible, and you must strive for it. Commit yourself to that. You'll achieve it. Next verse, 13. 